So one of the things we'll want to do with a server is virtualization. And Ubuntu Linux have the, has the ability to do a virtualization through a bunch of different platforms. But the one that we're going to play with is KVM, which is not necessarily built in, but it's the ability to run kernel level virtual machines. So um, I'm doing this inside of VM. In order to do this, I had to enable nested virtualization. Uh, so if you're trying to do this inside of VM, uh, you're going to have to do the same thing, and we'll cover that another time. So I just want to walk you through the process of installing KVM. And then we're going to uh, configure KVM, um, or we'll install and configure it, and then we'll look at managing it in a separate video. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that my processor is capable of supporting it. So I'm going to use with my right window here, egrep. And egrep is going to let me look for some specific information about my processor. So I'm looking for VMX or SVM from forward slash proc. Let's see if I can type here forward slash CPU info. I really cannot type today. All right, and so you'll see here that I have a number four, and that's how many virtual processors I have. And I basically, I'm looking for a number larger than zero. If I have a number larger than zero, then my system supports virtual processors. All right, now before I start installing the KVM stuff, I am going to uh, add the, my current user to, or I'm gonna add a group called uh, KVM. So I'm gonna do group, add KVM, and I'm going to use this group. I'm going to assign permissions to this group. Let me sudo up first. Uh, I'm going to use this group and assign permissions to them to manage KVM. So I'm going to add the group, and then I'm just going to sudo SU here because I'm going to need this here in a minute. And I am going to add myself to that group. So user mod. I want to add to group KVM, and I want to add that to my user, David. So now my use, standard username is going to be part of the KVM group. Um, now, before I get much farther, I need to uh, install KVM. So I'm going to do that using the command apt install. And... I'm going to install a handful of things here. I'm going to install bridge-utils. I am going to install uh, libvirt, V-I-R-T-bin. I'm going to install, let me find my list here, Q-E-M-U-KVM, Q. -E -M -U -KVM, Q E M U. There we go. Dash K V M. Um, and I'm going to install the Q E M U dash system. And I'm just going to string all of these together, and it should install all of them at the same time. And I'm going to hit yes to go ahead and continue. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this is running through the install, and we'll pick up the video again when the install finishes. Okay, so we've finished installing that batch. Now I'm gonna you can see we've finished off here. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and clear the screen because you can't see the bottom of my um, screen here. So I've I've installed the KVM packages and I'm also gonna need to install packages for the virtual machine management. Now you can do some basic virtual machine management from command line, but Typically, you're going to want to manage it using a GUI. And frequently, what we'll do is we'll install KVM on the server. We'll use another workstation that's going to be our uh, management um, station. And we'll install the management tools there. But since we've got a single system, I'm going to go ahead and install the virtual machine management tools here. So I'm going to do the command apt install. And for this, I'm going to install ssh-askpass. 
and then vert dash manager and then go ahead and hit yes and continue that and again I'm going to pause this and then we will pick it up again once we are done with uh, this installation Okay, so we finished off with our installation, and since we can't see the bottom of my screen, I'm just going to hit enter a few times to move it up to where we can see that it has indeed finished installing. All right, and then I'm going to clear the screen. Now, we have our installation of software in place. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to do for configuration. So, for starters, let's go to the forward slash VAR forward slash lib forward slash lib vert folder and do an ls dash l and we're going to see this third one down here this is the images folder now the images folder is going to be the default location where we're going to store files like ISOs or um, especially virtual machine hard drive files. So this is where we're going to store a lot of our images. And we can create other ones, but we're going to go ahead and use the default one. But I want to give KVM, the KVM group that we created a few minutes ago, permissions to manage this particular folder. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to chgrp, so change group owner. We're going to set KVM to the images folder. And I don't have to do the entire thing because I don't have to put in the entire path because I'm right here so I can use a relative path. Now when I do an LSL you're gonna see that the images folder is now owned by KVM instead of by root. Okay the other thing I want to do is I want to change permissions. So KVM is now the group owner I want to give them more than execute permissions I want to give them the ability to read write execute and since I have change the group order to that and I've added myself to the group that means I should be able to add things into this folder and modify things in the folder which means basically I can manage virtual machines so I'm gonna do ch mod so I'm gonna set 770 so the owner root should have all rights the group KVM should have all rights the rest of the world shouldn't have any rights and I'm going to do that to the images folder and then ls-l and we're going to see that we have our changes made the own group is now KVM with read write and execute permissions okay so that sets our um, that sets our permissions now the next thing we need to do is configure KVM and we're gonna have a configuration file and that configuration file is going to be in the ETC libvert uh, folder so I want to create a copy of it before I do anything else so it's CP forward slash ETC forward slash libvert forward slash libvertd.conf and this is my file I want to copy that to forward slash etc forward slash lib vert forward slash lib vert dot conf dot org and that should back up the file for me. All right, and I want to use the CP to create a duplicate copy of the file. I don't want to move it the way I do with some other config files because I'm going to go ahead and edit this particular uh, file. So that's going to be nano forward slash etc forward slash lib vert forward slash lib vert dot conf. And this is my... virtualization file which is not the virtualization config file that I wanted control X to exit and it's libvertd.conf and that was the one that I backed up let me just go ahead and fix my backup here and then nano etc libvertd.conf is there we go this looks better and so now I should be able to scroll down and see all of my configurations alright so a couple of things here I'm gonna change my Unix sock group from libvert to KVM 
because that's the group that I've created it, created for it. This uh, Unix Sock RO permissions um, is basically going to give everybody all permissions. And I'm going to restrict that so only the user, so 770, only the user and the group will have permissions and everyone else can't do anything. So Control O to write out the file and then enter to confirm that. Control X to exit. And then I should be able to clear the screen. And now I should be pretty much set up. Now I do need to restart my libvirt D service. So it's systemctl restart libvirt D. And then I'm going to check my status of it just to make sure that everything is the way I want it to be. And we are up and running. Okay. So at this point, um, KVM is installed. Now, we don't have any virtual machines or anything fun like that yet, but we do have KVM up and running. Now, like I said earlier, we can manage this using command line. A little bit problematic, but it can be done. Um, we actually typically want to do use a virtualization management tool, and we already installed that. But the virtualization management tool is a command or is a uh, GUI uh, system. And since we're running Ubuntu server, we don't have a GUI. So we are going to cover that, how to set up a GUI on the server in our next video.